welcome to the horse and groom. I'm Gary Goodman and I, I'm a painter and I also make prints and draw and make little sculptures but I also am a writer, a poet. I'm going to start off just reading a few poems. I sat in a pub garden in Arundel listening to drains gurgle. Laughter from inside, on my own again. No wind tonight. A band was setting up. I did a poetry reading earlier. Now I had to get two trains back. What do you do with a life? I like to paint. I do the crossword. Earlier I'd walked on the downs with the dog. Got a puncture, waited for the RAC. Found an almost, almost dead, dead body on West Worthing Station. Called 999, waited for an ambulance. I saw a man with a large pair of breasts bulging under his lilac polo shirt. He sat in the pub garden talking to a very beautiful woman. There's a brutal and beautiful honesty about the ordinary. So then all the poetry is based on sort of truth and experience and things, whereas the paintings are much more fantasy-like, you know, sort of imaginary really, and, but autobiographical to a certain extent, you know, but not as blatantly as the poetry. We're in my studio, which is very close to Hope Station. I just make things up as I go along, to be honest. You know, it's mainly just about just me going to the studio or, or just feeling that I really want to make a picture of something. But it's an, I'm, I very rarely plan what I'm going to paint. So, you know, today I might come to the studio and just, you know, think about my daughter. Her name's Bambi. And I thought I might think, oh, I might do a deer, you know, because she's really not too good at the moment. So something like that. But it's no, nothing really heavy, you know. I'm not really interested in art history or technique or anything. I just want to make pictures and say hello to the world. I was ill. I had a feeling I was going to die, but I tried to drink myself to death instead. I attempted to write, but my poems were terrible as usual. A mouse had crawled up through the floorboards in the bathroom. My daughter's snake escaped. The dog found it. I walked the dog up Sisbury Ring. The December wind ached my jaws, but it made me happy to see the dog scamper across the soft, mossy, frosty grass, smiling and panting, snuffling at rabbit holes. Sometimes Tilda will come with me. To love her is like sculpting the world out of granite with a teaspoon. It's a vocation and a choice of desire. <laughs> I started off always painting and about 10, 15 years ago I started writing these poetry. I was invited to read some of my poems once in Worthing. You know, I was really nervous actually. It was like, you know, I can imagine people who do sort of parachute jumps or something are really scared, but once they've done it, they just want to do it again, you know. I parked the car on the seafront and walked down the shingle beach in the dark. I stood at the edge of the, the sea, sea and pissed into, and the, rolling pissed into waves. the rolling waves. The sea that reached right across to the rest of the world. My piss could end up on the coast of any old country, but as I don't know anything about tides and ocean streams, I guessed it could just as likely end up messing my own shoes the next time I came here. I was going to meet you to ask you to take me back. I'm a complete idiot. Gary Goodman, idiot. <laughs> They're not naive, but they've got a childlike simplicity because I think they actually come from a very sophisticated emotional place, you know, whereas I think I told you before about my daughter being ill and, you know, the concerns about being a, a parent of a sick child, you know. But I don't want to sort of hammer that home and sort of say, well, here's a picture of my daughter lying in bed with tubes all over, you know. So it's, it's a more subtle thing. So they are about something, actually. It's like accepting that life is full of tragedy as well as beauty and, and, and loveliness, you know. And so when I read my poems, you know, I don't want to people go away thinking, oh, God, I want to slip my wrist now, you know, I feel really depressed. So I'd really like to put a bit of comedy in there. Bambi and Poppy got attacked by a gang of chavs on East Worthing Station. I wished I was there. About five years ago, when Bambi was a goth, we were walking up the stairs in WH Smith's. She looked beautiful with her white hair, striking in contrast to her black outfit. A dumpy witch in a peach leisure suit stopped and stared, almost breaking her neck to get a closer look at Bambi. Then she smirked. I said, you shouldn't stare. It makes you fat and ugly. 
And because I've been painting for so long, I've got a, a repertoire of imagery, you know. There's lots of females, lots of young girls, because I've got two daughters, you know, and I think that must come from there. But they're not actually portraits of things, you know. And lots of animals, because I just love animals, and, you know, I like painting them, you know. Are you the animal? Not consciously, but very often I've looked at my work and thought, actually, you know, I've never done a, a straight self-portrait, but most of the figures in my work that aren't animals are female. So I think, yeah, it's a very it's a real possibility, yeah. We are now approaching Wormley. Wind and rain blusters a heavy roar against the station roof. It's difficult to light a cigarette. When I was in Somerset last year, I went to a pub that was packed with many different people. Lots of old hippies, and also young emos and punks, probably their children. This woman asked me to join her table. They were a large group. It was kind of her, but I felt I'd rather be alone. I wasn't feeling too confident. I often put myself in the position of an outsider, or I seem to be waiting at stations, in bus stops, supermarket checkouts, bars, cafes and pubs, music and traffic floating in the distance. Tonight I sit on a desolate dead platform, legs dangling above it all. An owl hoots like somebody practicing the recorder. It clears my mind. Twenty minutes still before the next train. I feel I can continue for a while longer. Cut. Thanks very much for listening, Stephen.